is yours. Thanks, Adon. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hello. Um, it's great to be here. I am here today to share an exciting development in the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program through which the United States has long welcomed newcomers in search of safety and freedom. We're launching the Welcome Corps, a private sponsorship initiative that will create new opportunities for private Americans to directly sponsor refugees from around the world who are here fleeing conflict, fleeing persecution, and to help these refugees settle in their communities. The Welcome Corps invites Americans to do what we do best, welcoming newcomers, being good guides, neighbors, and friends. Welcoming refugees reflects our values as a nation, and local communities have long been at the heart of our resettlement program. Just in the past year, individual Americans and community groups around the country have opened their arms to Afghans, Ukrainians, and refugees from around the world fleeing conflict and persecution. The Welcome Corps is the boldest innovation in the U.S. refugee resettlement in four decades, and it reflects the Biden administration's commitment to expand community engagement as we rebuild our refugee program. It's designed to strengthen and expand our country's capacity to resettle refugees by harnessing the energy of private sponsors from all walks of life, including community volunteers, faith and civic groups, veterans, diaspora communities, businesses, colleges, universities, and more. Private sponsors will help refugees find housing and employment, enroll their kids in school, enroll the adults in English classes, and connect with other essential services, including those that are funded by federal programs. The Welcome Corps is distinct from other sponsorship programs like Uniting for Ukraine in that private sponsors will support refugees who are being permanently resettled in the United States and help them integrate as thriving members of their new communities. Private sponsors in the Welcome Corps will receive training and support from resettlement experts and become part of a nationwide community of people engaged in this work. We're launching the Welcome Corps in two phases. In the first phase, groups of five or more Americans or legal permanent residents can apply to form a private sponsor group. When certified, they will be matched with a refugee who is already approved for resettlement in the United States. In the second phase, which will launch around the middle of this year, groups can identify and refer to the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program the refugees they would like to sponsor. If approved and certified, they will then sponsor the resettlement of these specific refugees. Our goal in 2023 is to mobilize 10,000 Americans to step forward as private sponsors and help resettle at least 5,000 refugees. Time and again, we've seen the generosity and the welcoming spirit of the American people. If more than 10,000 sponsors join the Welcome Corps this year, we will make every effort to pair them with refugees in need. We at the State Department are excited to launch the Welcome Corps as part of our broader effort to rebuild, expand, and modernize the refugee resettlement program. We look forward to engaging with individuals and communities around the world who wish to participate. And I would just say something on a personal level. My own parents arrived in this country as refugees before the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program was created. And the people who helped them were ordinary, everyday Americans, and they still tell stories about how they were welcomed to this country. So I see this as an offshoot of the historic traditions in our countries of welcoming newcomers. Anyway, for more information on the Welcome Corps, I invite Americans who wish to be involved in this fulfilling effort to visit our new website, welcomecorps.org, to learn more about how to join this program. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. Matt, want to kick us off? Great. Thanks. Um, thank you, Assistant Secretary. Um, I, I have two, one extremely brief. Why is it groups of five or more? I mean, why can't uh, an individual, and I can think of several off the top of my head who are fabulously wealthy, who might be able to do this just on their own. So why is it limited to groups of five or more? And then secondly, uh, much more broadly, um, this administration has tried to make up for the uh, reduction um, the, in admissions from the previous administration, but it has not yet come even close, and the the, the, uh, the 
first to the first quarter of this fiscal year, the numbers are, are quite low. Well, why, why is that? Okay, so to go to your first question, why five or more? Um, and you mentioned that wealthy people could do it. Uh, well, even it, moderately wealthy people. Because it's not about money, Matt. It's about commitment. It's about the community. It's about bringing people together and forming a group so that the refugees have more than one person that they can refer to and can work with. And it's our view, it, it's a lot of work involved in, in sponsoring a refugee, finding schools, helping them find affordable housing, getting their kids signed up for school, helping them find jobs, showing them where the pharmacy is, what bus to take. It's a lot more than what the average American can do. And so we think that providing a group of five or more Americans is more likely to be successful and it gives more resources to the incoming refugees and it creates greater connections with the community. In terms of the numbers, you're right, we are still working to build the numbers up in order to get to the president's ambitious targets of, of 125,000 refugees admitted per year. Um, we are doing that in a variety of ways. The launch of the, of the Welcome Corps is one initiative, but we're doing a lot of work with our traditional resettlement agency partners to try and speed up processing while maintaining the integrity and the security of the program and not in any way changing the requirements. Refugees are the most vetted individuals to enter this country. So we're speeding up the processing. We are amplifying, expanding the ways that people can be referred for refugee resettlement in the United States. The Welcome Corps and maybe the private individuals nominating refugees to come in this way, but we're also expanding NGO referrals. We are asking our partners at the UN High Commissioner for Refugees to expand the number of referrals they send us. We're also looking to clear out our backlog of cases. We are doing hiring. Our resettlement agency partners are doing hiring. So there's a lot of work going on. While the numbers of people admitted, of refugees admitted in the first quarter were not where we would like them to be, Admissions of refugees is actually a lagging indicator. In the first quarter of this fiscal year, the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service conducted over 20,000 interviews of refugees overseas. We expect that those people should be hitting our country within the next few months, and we expect, and I am confident, that you will see an increase in the number of refugees arriving in the months ahead. Saeed, you had your hand up? Thank you. Thank you. No, you missed. Uh, uh, Along the same lines, but particularly to Syrian refugees, uh, can you give us the, the status of Syrian refugees figures and numbers? You know, it went from a high of sixteen thousand in, in twenty sixteen to uh, as low as four thousand in the past administration in, in twenty twenty. I think this the last year was maybe four thousand mm -hmm. refugees. How are they? Do they have to go to a third country? Can they flee directly uh, from Syria from the uh, battle? areas in Syria and so on, and related to it, you oppose the, you know, the, the reallowing of Syrian refugees now back into Syria or the United States. Oh, the you know, involuntary the return. Because they say conditions uh, are, not, are not right for, for them mm -hmm. to return. So give us your take on that. So it's Thank a great you. question, and, and it's one that's close to my heart. In November, I visited Zatari refugee camp in Jordan that hosts you know tens of thousands of Syrians. Look. The situation in Syria is terrible, and we don't believe that conditions are right in Syria for people to be able to return safely, voluntarily, with dignity, and sustainably. It's just not, it's just not safe for people to return, and people, Syrians who have left the country, don't want to return voluntarily to Syria. So we're looking for new solutions for them and working with our partners around the world, because this isn't an effort that just the United States is undertaking, other countries also are resettling refugees. So we are looking for avenues to find more durable solutions for these <coughs> refugees, whether it is helping them to integrate in the countries where they have fled in search of safety, providing programs and assistance to them where they currently are. But then for those people who are the most vulnerable and face the greatest danger if they were to return to their own country, we're looking for solutions like resettlement. And we are confident that with all of the changes and all of the growth that we're making to the refugee uh, admissions program, whether it's the Welcome Corps or the other initiatives that I talked about, we will be creating the conditions to bring refugees from vulnerable situations all over the world, whether it's Syrians, 
or Rohingya who are currently in Bangladesh, or, or other people who, who need to flee to safety and to find solutions for them. Again, working with our partners around the world, because this isn't a burden or a responsibility that the United States is taking on alone. But thanks for that question. No, it's Camilla, yeah. John. Thank you. Um, you probably saw that the, uh, the rates of irregular border crossing in Europe reached an all-time high since 2016 um, last year. Um, the, uh, is there other programs or is there coordination with the EU for any refugees who would want, you know, who could come to a European country, but who could come to America instead, particularly in countries in Europe that are inundated with refugees? Is there more coordination to get more of them to come to the States through this particular program? Um, and I'm sure that we can talk about the other programs as well, but more specifically this one. We, we talk regularly with our partners in Europe and around the world with like-minded kind of countries around the world to try and coordinate, to find solutions, to work together. It's our view and the view of our partners, and I do talk regularly with the EU and, and with partners over there. It's our view that this is a responsibility that democracies and that countries that, that love um, freedom and uphold human rights need to all work together. I mean, we faced a terrible milestone um, this past year when the UN High Commissioner for Refugees announced that more than 100 million people are now forcibly displaced around the world. That's over 1% of the world's population. Um, there has never been a higher number of forcibly displaced people. So we need to pursue all kinds of durable solutions, whether it is creating the conditions so that people can return to their home countries safely, voluntarily, with dignity. Um, and that's always the preferred solution for people to be able to go home, but only when it's safe but also looking for initiatives and providing support and assistance to help people integrate where they happen to be. <clears throat> the resettlement solution is uh, the most dramatic. It is also by far the smallest. Less than 1% of refugees around the world ultimately are resettled to third countries. Uh, we really only use that solution for the most vulnerable, people who are fleeing religious persecution or human trafficking or who have been victims of torture. So it really is kind of the, the in extremis solution, but it is one that, that we take happily and voluntarily in the United States and that many of our partners do as well. So we're working on all of those solutions at the same time, but I'm really happy that today we're announcing the Welcome Corps as part of our solution for and part of our means of bringing about uh, resettlement here in the United States and, and tapping into Americans who have such a long, long history as a nation of immigrants of, of welcoming newcomers and, and making things better. And again, my own family history is, is proof of that. You're setting up a private immigration system. Do you have any safeguards for Americans? Thank you so much. No, I want to know, are there any protections for Americans when you're selling access to the United States? We're not selling Yes, you are. In the second provision, in the second aspect, you say private families I will can call do it. On you when we, uh, work no, it won't matter. You're not going to have the answer, but yeah. I have what I need. Thank if you. If you want to kick us off.